It's truly rainy in New York City and very dark. I didn't know I was going to make it home on time. I just got in at 6.30, quickly sent out um, an invite for people to join. So the invitation says September is the ninth month. And are you ready to deliver? Are you ready to bear down? That's what we're going, the question we're going to answer today. Nonetheless, I want to stop and tell you how much um, I value you and thank you for coming on. Thank you for partnering with this ministry. Thank you for your prayers. Last week, I was a bit under the weather and so I wasn't on. But today, coming in, I thought I was going to miss again, but God was, you know, God was kind and I came in just about 30 minutes ago, and um, I just want to say welcome, Michelle, or welcome, Reverend Brown, Zeb, Galaxy 8. I can't see much other people. Oh, there are so many phone numbers that I can't recognize, not names. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Let us open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you, and we worship you. We magnify your name. Father, Lord God, we we thank you for from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Your name is worthy to be praised. You are high and lifted up. There is none like you, our Father. Father, Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Spirit, move upon our hearts. Touch our minds. Give us clarity of thoughts. And give me precision of tongue in the mighty name of Jesus. Let these small morsels be received. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We praise you and we worship you. And we magnify your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And let everyone say a resounding amen. September is the ninth month. It is the month of birthing. And my question is, are you ready to bear down? Are you ready to deliver? Are you ready to deliver a full term baby? Are you ready to deliver a stillborn child? Have you aborted the seed that God placed in you? Or it is there and it is like the, I think they said the African bush lion who takes 22 months in order to deliver. So we have three months left before the curtains of 2023 are drawn and the new year is ushered in. And my question to you when I ask, are you ready to bear down? This is the ninth month. Are you ready to give birth? And it is a question of reflection. And it reflects on not only the previous eight months, but it reflects also on previous years. And your quote unquote uh, New Year's resolution at the onset of the year, we are noted, we are known as humans to make resolutions. And these are things that we either speak to ourselves or we have communicated with others that we wish to achieve in the year 2023. So, my question is Is it time for you to give birth in the ninth month, or do you still have a few months left? You still have three months, and we do not want. Want you to give a birth prematurely. We want you to give birth full term. Not that prematurely. It doesn't mean that something good can't come out of it. I'm sitting before you and I was a preemie, uh, three pounds, seven months, more than 50 years ago, 50 years ago in a third world country. So God is able to keep when God has his hands on someone and he has made a sovereign declaration. There is nothing that can stop it. What have you done? Reverend Brown, what have you done? Are you ready to give birth? Sharon Shorter, are you ready to give birth? What about you, Yvette and Seb? And Michelle, are you ready to give birth? And all the other, Morton, are you ready to give birth? And all these other numbers that have joined me that I can't place a name or a face, are you ready to give birth? What is the investment that you have made in yourself in the last eight months or over the years? Are you ready to give birth? Have you invested in yourself? Have you stayed the course? Have you 
assess to yourself. It is, it, we should, we should. One of the first things that we do when you enter the hospital system is that we make a thorough assessment of our patient and we come up with a plan of care. Periodically, we revisit we revisit that plan of care to see if it needs to be tweaked, to see if we are accomplishing that which we set out to accomplish, or if altogether we need to redo a total plan of care. So when was the last time you sat down and you really took pen to paper and said, where am I? Have I um, accomplished financially or am I accomplishing financially? Am I getting out of debt? Have I looked at my investments and I've noticed that I need to do something about this or I need to do something about that? Or have I looked at my finances and I realized that indeed I am getting out of debt, it is coming down, or have I put myself in greater debt? When you look at your health, have you improved? Are you pleased with what you see? Are you pleased with uh, um, what you're doing, what you've done? I moved recently to New Jersey and it's almost a year. And for one year, I have not exercised. And I said, enough is enough. So I drew up a plan, got some stuff purchased, took out what need to be taken out. And next week I begin, I begin to go back on my journey. But funny enough, my bishop said something today and we were discussing health. And he says, if you worship like Jen, you keep your heart healthy. He says, do you see how she worships? He says, that is activity, that is dancing, that is exercise, that is keeping our cardiovascular system strong. And so I said, look at God, two for the price of one. I'm worshiping God, but at the same time, I'm getting some cardiovascular workout because I love to worship. When we look at our marriage, our marital situations, have we worked on that? them? Have they become any better or are they going south? When we look at the relationship and our family dynamics in terms of our children, the relationship between our children, have they improved? But most importantly, destiny calls. Have you been answering destiny call? What about your assignment? God has laid a seed in all of us. And no man, no man that God breathed his breath in can say, I don't have an assignment. We might not know it, but everyone, you were fearfully and wonderfully created. You are not an accident. There is greatness inside of us, but it needs to be stirred up. It need to be, it needs to be identified. And we have to say yes. We have to agree. We have to want it. The Holy Spirit is not going to do everything for us. Some things he's going to do all by himself because he is God and it can only be done by God. Other things we're going to have to partner with the spirit of the living God. And still there are those that we must do by ourselves because he has equipped, he has empowered us and he has given us that charge and challenge to be accomplishers. We are more than victorious in Christ Jesus. So I really want to ask you, are you ready to give birth? Are you ready to give birth? Or have you um, aborted that seed? Or have you given up on it? Or have you become frustrated? Have you prayed and asked God to send you those who can help you? No man is an island, Yvette. No man is an island, Michelle. And certainly no man can stand alone. We need the ministry of men, Valerie. We need the ministry of men, Maria, Morton, you need men. And when I say men, it's gender neutral. I mean, you need a human being. You need somebody who knows more than you, somebody who knows more than you and is stronger than you spiritually, somebody who's stronger than you financially, somebody who's stronger than you intellectually, because you need somebody to push you. You need a bolster. You need somebody to boost you. You need somebody to show you the way. You need somebody to encourage you. You need somebody to 
say, I know the way and I'm willing and ready to show you the way. My question is three more months before the year ends, three more months before the curtain is drawn. And what have you accomplished? The other day I was talking to a friend and I make no bones about it. I said to her, I have never been in this place in a very long time. The peace of God that I'm experiencing, I cannot explain it, Sharon. I cannot explain it, Michelle, but everything is not right in my life. Things are on course, but everything is not the way I want it to be. But yet I'm experiencing this peace. Peace like a river has overtaken my life. And one of the things that I can accredit this to is my prayer life. The Holy Spirit has moved me, moved me into a very, very special place of prayer. I shared this with a friend of mine today, and I'm going to share it with you. We did a, a portion about a couple of weeks ago on prayer, how to have staying power. There's one thing that I needed to tell you that I did not share. Folks, listen to me and listen carefully. When you sit down to pray and you have allotted your time, five minutes for my son, five minutes for my daughter, five minutes for me, five minutes for my mother, five minutes for the church, five minutes for America. However you have allotted it, take the same amount of time, five minutes, 10 minutes. And if God has baptized you with the spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongue, pray in the spirit. Because the Bible lets us know that when we pray in the spirit, we edify ourselves. When we pray in the spirit, we pray beyond our understanding. Now it is the spirit of the living God speaking to God. And he knows the deep things of God. He knows how to pray the will of God in our lives, in the lives of those around us, in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our country, in continents through us. God just wants a man or a woman to avail themselves. So I just wanted to throw that piece. Please, we do ourselves a sore disjustice if you do not pray in the spirit. Do it every day. Do it for five minutes. Do it for 10 minutes. When you were a babe, when you were a babe, you did a Goo Goo Gaga, one word, yeah, one word, no. But as you practiced and you listened to others speak, then you increased your language. You increase your ability to speak. You learn new words. So it is in the spirit praying in the spirit. The more you do it, the more adept you become at it, the more proficient you become at it, and the more you open yourself to be used by the Holy Spirit, and the more you edify yourself. I must attribute this peace that I am experiencing to the new, my new prayer my new prayer life and just the people that God has sent in my life to help me. Oh, we still have three months. It's not too late. It is not too late to go back to the drawing board. If that stay the course, do not give up and do not give in. You are well able. God sent out, Moses sent out 12 spies, 10 looked through the eyes of their flesh, 10 looked through their human understanding, but two, one called Joshua and one called Caleb, they remembered what God had done for them. They remembered how they crossed over the Red Sea and they looked through the eyes and the lenses of who God is and what God has done. And they said, we are well able. The other 10 says, we see ourselves as grasshopper. Um, asking you, I'm begging you, I'm pleading with you, look at yourself through the lenses of scriptures, look at yourself through the eyes of God, the plans and the purposes of God for your life, and work on that seed, work on that seed that is inside of you, don't give up, don't give in, do not let it come out prematurely, do not abort it, and do not leave it there to die. So today, while I'm speaking, you should be thinking, 
You should be happy that we serve a God who makes no mistake. We serve a God of second chances. We serve a God that we can go to and say, Father God, I've messed up. I've not really worked on this seed, but I got three months and I got 2024. I'm not going to waste the next three months. I'm going to draft a plan and I'm going to work at it because I can give birth just about when June is about to come in 2024. Work on yourselves, people. God is not going to work on you. Work on yourselves. Do what he has called you to do. Get into the word of God. Get the word of God into you. Surround you with like-minded people, people who can help you birth and bring your dreams to pass. Get into other good books and read. Take care of your health. Take care of your mind. Set yourself up for success. Success is intentional and you must be intentional about success. It's not just going to happen. It is not abracadabra. So we are going to pray. We're going to pray about that seed. We're going to pray that God will give you the grace, stick to that God will send men around you called destiny helpers and burden bearers and connectors and those who have impact and influence and those with resources. You need the ministry of men. You need the ministry of men. You need the ministry of men. God will set run about you. You don't even have to ask God to set angels run about you. That is given. That is given. That is a done deal. God has edged us in and he has set angels run about us. But you need God to send men your way. You must ask God to give you the heart, a heart that is loyal, a heart that is faithful to him. Because I'm telling you, if you take up God's business, God will certainly take up yours. I just want to tell you that God loves all of you, that you are the apple of his eyes, that you are special in his sight, that his plans towards your peace and not evil to give you hope and a marvelous future, that he's never going to leave you, he's never going to forsake you, that he's the God that sticks closer than a brother. He is at your beckoning call, even the seed that is within you. Ask him to give you the grace. We need grace like never before to stay the course, grace like like never before, to pray grace like never to before, to hunger and thirst after holiness and righteousness. So we are going to pray and ask God, God, we have three more months, but I'm going to ask you, you said in the last day, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Ask him that you need to be overwhelmed. You have been overwhelmed with problems. You have been overwhelmed with the trials of life. You have been overwhelmed with confusion. You have been overwhelmed, tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. You have been overwhelmed, tossed hither and tossed thither. But now you want to be overwhelmed by the spirit of the living God. You want God's mercy to overtake you. You want goodness to be positioned on your right, mercy on your left. You want the spirit of the living God to go before you as a source of light so you will not stumble. And you want the spirit of the living God to stand behind you as a rear guard. Jen, how is he going to be before me and behind me because our God is ubiquitous. He's here, there, and everywhere at all times. There is nothing too hard for God to do. So let us pray. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, and we worship you. Father, you said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Spirit of the living God, I present your sons. Spirit of the living God, I present your daughters to you. I pray for grace, Lord God. Overwhelm them but with your the power of your spirit. Holy Spirit, rest upon them. Let the Shekinah glory rest upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord God, energize them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the zeal of the Lord consume them, Lord God. Give them the grace, oh God, of boldness. Give them the grace of stick to in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, you told Joshua, be courageous. You said, Moses, my servant is dead, but I will be with you only 
only be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. She said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I pray, oh, Father, Lord God, that you will touch your people. I pray for energy, Lord God. I pray for zeal, Lord God. I pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I pray, oh, Father, Lord God, that you will undergird them. I pray for the ministry of men. I pray that you will send them destiny helpers. I pray, oh, Father, Lord God, that you will edge them about. Oh, Father, Lord God, I'm asking you today to lessen the toil, lessen the time, lessen the tears in the mighty name. <clears throat> of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Give them an open heaven under which to live. Father, Lord God, I pray for their loved ones. I pray, oh, Father God, that you will save them. The household of the righteous shall be saved. It is written in the holy pericope. I pray, oh, Father, Lord God, the Bible says, oh, God, by the word of the mouth of the psalmist, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. Remember their grandmothers. Remember their grandfathers. Remember their grandchildren. Remember their mothers. Remember their fathers. Remember their sisters. Remember their brothers. Uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, aunts, in-laws. Everyone and everything attached to them in blood lineage. I pray for salvation in the name of Jesus. I pray for reconciliation, Lord God. I pray, oh Father, Lord God, that you will, oh Father, Lord God, bless them and bless them indeed in the name of Jesus. I pray that the week ahead, Lord God, God will be a week like they have never experienced in the mighty name of Jesus and open heaven, Lord God. I pray for them, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh Father, Lord God, have mercy upon them and help them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I pray, oh God, a visitation of health. I pray, oh Father, Lord God, oh Father, Lord God, sound mind in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh Father God, for a love for your word, oh God. I pray, oh Lord God, that you would baptize them afresh in the mighty name of Jesus with the grace of prayer, Lord God. Oh Father, intercession in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh Father, Lord God, cause them to love thy word, uh, cause them to hide it in your heart, in their hearts, uh, that they might not sin against you. Father, Lord God, let the triad, oh Father God, for success, uh, which is the word of God, uh, which is prayer, Lord God, uh, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Uh, oh Father, Lord God, uh, let there be, oh Father, Lord God, uh, a harmonious blend, oh Father, Lord God, of all three in their lives. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, I lay a blood covering over them in the name of Jesus. Uh, I lay a blood covering over everyone that concerneth them. Oh, Father, Lord God, give them the grace to stir up the gifts, the gifts that you have laid, oh, Father, Lord God, and buried in their bowels. Oh, Father, Lord God, before the foundation of the earth. Father, I thank you for them and I bless you for them, Lord God, and I praise you for them. I pray that you will show up tonight and show forth. Speak to them in a dream, Lord God. Show them the next step that needs to be taken. Oh, Father, Lord God, you know where they need help. You know what they're lacking in, oh, Father God. And Father, Lord God, the Bible says that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in Christ, in glory through Christ Jesus. Oh, Father, the provision. Let it be their portion all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name I have prayed and let the church say amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to remind you, mark your calendars. We have two important events that are upcoming. We have our last event of the year, and that is on December 9th at Dyker Beach Golf Course in their Grand Ballroom, being hosted by Jen Harvey of the Huddle. The tickets are $85, Dyker Heights in their Grand Ballroom. It is December 9th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. or brunch symposium. It's going to be amazing. We have our live DJ. We have our fashion show. Beautiful five-station brunch. And then we have our keynote speaker, Apostle Anna. I'm telling you, when I talk about a woman who moves in the prophetic, you don't want to miss this. An event being hosted for a woman, being hosted by a woman for women. And then mark your calendars or staple the first Friday in the in the 
in the year 2024. And think that is January 5th, we have our all night prayer, praise and prophetic explosion. And then you take home your amazing Caribbean breakfast. And everybody knows that is free of charge. So you've got to mark your calendars, prepare yourself. We're going to be in the grand ballroom. We're going to dance. We're going to sing. We're going to worship. I'm going to have an open forum. When I tell you whatever you ask me, I'm going to answer. I'm going to give you a bibliocentric answer. Ask me about motherhood, ask me about monies, ask me about marriage, ask me about sex, whatever you want to ask, no holds bar. It is time that we be, start being honest with each other and honest with ourselves. That's why many of us are not being helped because the Bible says, God says to the forward, I will show myself forward. We can't hide from God. We know and most people may not want to open their mouth and say it. So we have this little basket. You know what is going to be asked. You can write your questions before you come. We drop it in the basket. You don't have to identify yourselves. And then I will answer and I will share with you what you need to do, how to position yourself for 2024. And then Apostle Anne will minister. I just want to say thank you for joining me today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your prayers. You are are valuable not only in the sight of God, but you are valuable to this ministry. This is Jen Harvey of the Huddle, and the Bible says international ministries. Until we meet again, may the peace, presence, power, purpose, provision, protection, promises, and providence of God rest and abide permanently in your life is my prayer. Friends, I love you. Go forth and thrive.